Hey everybody, welcome on the Lights On Data Show. <laughs> Yay! I'm Deanna. And I'm George. And today we have an amazing guest, Dawn Hall. Which I'm going to introduce before we're bringing her online. Dawn is the Executive Vice President of Strategy and Growth, Reveal Global Consulting. She's a proven leader, innovator, and critical thinker. She's passionate about data and advanced analytics to solve complex uh, challenges unique to the public sector and a wide range of commercial enterprises. Uh, Dawn has led cross-functional teams to apply groundbreaking data modeling, intelligence, and analytic processes automation, also known as APA, solutions that extract quantifiable value from the world's largest, most diverse data sets. For over 20 years, Dawn has helped clients in numerous industries optimize the volume, velocity, veracity, and the value of their data. She has built strong partnerships that fuel rapid growth, capitalizing on opportunities for digital transformation and sustainable success. Dawn holds a Juris Doctor from University of San Diego uh, School, uh, School of Law, a Master of Science in Healthcare Administration from the University of Maryland School of Public Health, and a BA from Columbia University. Wow. Welcome, Dawn. Thanks so much, uh, Dion and George. It's great to be here. <laughs> so good to have you. Don, the first thing that comes to mind, you have education in healthcare, you have education in law. How does this fit in with uh, what you do today? That's a great question. Uh, and actually, what I do today really kind of brings together my background in really interesting ways. Because um, for law, you really have to learn how to be a critical thinker um, and, and think about your client's problems from kind of the inside out. So really dig in to understand what they are and learn about them so that you can best address and solve their problems, hopefully, um, or at least you know protect them to the best of your ability and, and their best interests. And I, with healthcare, healthcare spans, it, obviously it's its own field, but it spans a lot of different industries. It spans technology, um, it's, it spans, you know, um, delivery systems, supply chains. Um, it, it just it, it encompasses a broad range of industries. And so with that exposure and understanding, um, I can bring to bear that background on, on what I do and with our really amazing team at Reveal. And one of the things that I really love about our company and about our team and our approach is to have that you know, kind of fall in love with our clients' issues and their problems and their challenges and really get to know them. And that is, that's a value that we have across our organization. And I think that's one of our keys to success. So I think that's... So, so Don, uh, a lot of people that are watching us now live or they'll watch the recording, they definitely want to see and understand all these different applications that you can have with advanced analytics on imaging. Mm -hmm. Where so, where would we start? What what are some of your favorites? Um, so I, one of the things that comes to my mind immediately is the work that our company is currently doing with the U.S. Census Bureau. Um, U.S. Census Bureau is not only a people counter, but they are the collectors and in, in they do collection and anal analysis and delivery of a wide range of um, economic indicator data. Mm -hmm. So, for example. We're working right now with the construction indicator data in that division. And um, Census does, has done a lot of its work very, you know, he heavily manual, using heavily manual processes. So, for example, surveys, they collect a lot of their data vis-a-vis -vis surveys, which are very, you know, it's a burden to ad administer, it's a burden to collect, and um, and that's very resource intensive. So they asked us, their, as part of their transformation, you know, digital transformation, and, initiative, they asked us to come in and help, you know, bring advanced analytics and to solve their problems in terms of alleviating the burden on, you know, the serve or the reliance on survey uh, data collection, and then to um, apply emerging technologies to the analytics part of it. So what's and, the alternative then if you don't do it through surveys, what's that better, better way of doing it? So what, what we did, what our team did is, you know, bring in third party data. So we brought in uh, building permit survey, building permit data, and we also brought in um, satellite imagery data. And that's where the high resolution and analytics comes to bear on these 
satellite images where we develop proprietary techniques using, you know, AI, ML, deep learning, for example, convolutional neural networks to be able to analyze, for example, construction starts, stops, and finishes and across you know a, a wide scope of geography so combined with the third party uh, data and then our analytics um, of you know satellite images to detect those different phases of construction um, wow. not just across residential but also um, commercial and public we're able to really develop a comprehensive picture of construction activity across the u.s that's incredible <laughs> that's awesome and uh, one thing yeah, yeah. It, the team is constantly improving the model. Um, which they're refining it. They actually um, worked with uh, Canada's Census Bureau and um, other countries, um, you know, data to be able to train the models um, in order to be able to identify, you know, what it, does a construction start look like. What does a you know stop look like? What does a finish look like? And you know, being able to now train it to like look at when the roof goes on, when the driveway goes in, for example, um, even when the when the post post box goes up. Um, so we're we're constantly doing that. And the reason that this is so important and transformational is that it alleviates the the resource burden for the U.S. Census Bureau. It mm -hmm. helps to upscale their workforce to be able to focus on things that are you know rather than just managing this you know, a lot of surveys and, and making sure that that goes well and they collect the data that they need. But it also moves financial markets across the world by billions of dollars. Um, construction activity is a, is a very strong indicator of economic uh, performance and um, health. So it's, it's a, it's the, that data is released monthly and it is wow. uh, impactful worldwide. Well, I can imagine, as Ravid uh, was mentioning here, Reveal Go Global Consulting is doing some serious business. Mm -hmm. Thanks for that detailed information, Don Hall. And I, I guess, Don, you, you, you guys are really handling everything when it comes to this project, because I would imagine there's quite a little bit of data preparation that needs to happen. I mean, even I'm thinking just dividing the... Um, the map of the United States by all of its different regions, so you can report on, you know, by state, by county, and all these things. So all that geofencing on its own takes quite a little bit of time to do. Yes, once Absolutely. you have it set up, it's done. But then, I guess there's quite a little bit of data transformation, data cleansing that you have to put in place, Very and all of that so. is handled by Reveal. Yes, it is. Our team is. Um, to your point, George, there is a lot that has to go into just, you know, after we've identified the data that we need and validated it, and then to bring it in, to cleanse it, to ingest it, and using an uh, analytics process automation platform that's um, through Alteryx. Um, we mm -hmm. then, you know, feed the data into the Alteryx platform, but then we're also overlaying, so to speak, or integrating, you know, our analytics with the platform. And um, it, it's really, it's it's an incredible team effort. We also use um, advanced visualization techniques to be able to, um, you know, for, for folks at the Census Bureau to be able to view the, the findings of the data, the outcomes. And so it's a real end-to-end -end solution. And that's one of the things that we do. We really do do AI and ML. What we do is we also create it to be used in a really practical, impactful way. And in that, you know, create an end-to-end -end solution for our clients. So you're not just handing them, oh, hey, here's this algorithm, you know, have at it. <laughs> um, we, we really look at, at it from an end-to-end -end perspective so that we can give a really comprehensive um, solution to our clients. And that's, I think, one of the things important for people to everyone everywhere to understand about advanced analytics is it's not in a vacuum it really mm -hmm. needs to work across the solution and it needs to be able to integrate with existing uh, technology and we pride ourselves and what's really important to our clients is that we're uh, hardware and software agnostic because you have to meet your clients where they are and then help hold their hand along this digital transformation journey mm -hmm. and um and it really is a journey. So we really love being on with with our clients and with um, with our team. It's really, um, you know, we we are continuously learning ourselves and and brainstorming. And that's a really important feature of of uh, I think being successful at using advanced analytics to create practical and really impactful solutions. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm curious um, who 
who's, who is part of the team? So, so we, I'm, I'm the, the reason why I'm asking is because I think it's very hard for companies to have this type of expertise in house, at least at the beginning of this transformation journey. So I'm just curious, yeah, what what are the members of of your team? So we have a we have a like a wide scope of folks with um, different types of of expertise. So we have data scientists, mm -hmm. we have pro people that are uh, adept at programming, um, we have people that have advanced visualization tech technique, and and we we have all of that in some of the same people. So mm -hmm. um, and and I, I would say that one thing that's important for a company to to uh, to commit to is continuous development of their team. So when it comes to, because this world's changing so quickly, and that's one thing we make an investment in really um, helping our team members develop the expertise and the technology expertise, because that's changing too. Um, so not just skill sets, but also understanding and having knowledge and confidence around new technologies like, you know, that Alteryx brings to bear that, you know, Tableau for advanced visualization, uh, Snowflake, AWS, um, you know, edge computing. Uh, it's, it's very important because uh, I think that um, you really need to work with, with the team you have, but then also be, you know, bringing people into support, but making that commitment to your team's development is really critical. I love Absolutely. That. I love that so much. That's so true. And you also get the, you know, the satisfaction of um, of the team in return and the dedication towards um, your company. Absolutely. Yeah. And they do a much better job. Yeah. And obviously they <laughs> do because they, they're working on amazing, incredible projects that deliver a lot of value. Mm -hmm. And and Don, I, I do want to move to other examples as well, but I'm curious when you're talking about the modeling on... Um, on the residential side versus the commercial side, I guess they would differ as well a little bit. There's some overlap, mm -hmm. but there's some differences too. In terms of the, yes, in terms of the, even the location, um, the construction, uh, understanding what a residential start, stop and finish looks like versus a like a public works or a commercial mm -hmm. start, stop and, and finish. And we've developed, um, you know, I'd love to talk more about it. And I would actually love to bring in um, some of our, uh, you know, technologists um, to talk about it. But again, it, it's like proprietary that it's exciting what we've done. And I just want to offer if anyone wants to follow up or learn more, we'll I'd be happy to, you know, um, address that offline, but it's, it's really, it's interesting. And I feel like it's a, it's something that really could continuously evolve. Um, we can get down to not just looking at start stops and finishes, but looking at um, factoring and material costs, for example. And um, so we could apply it to like, not just for census, but also for other industries, like the commercial industry for insurance. Um, I don't know if you wanted me to head there now or if you wanted to ask yes, about that. Yes, please, please. Yeah, that was one of my next questions. <laughs> so um, the exciting thing about this technology, again, is that it's applicable, you know, with the public sector, but also in commercial sectors as well and multiple commercial sectors. So a good example is um, with insurance companies. And this, this also stems not just from the work that we're doing on construction indicator analytics and reporting, but also we we did for a Census Innovation Lab, a really exciting project looking at the impact of disaster funding, um, you know, after a natural disaster. We chose to look at wildfires because as you all know, unfortunately they're very prevalent, especially in, you know, areas like Northern California, but really all over the world. We chose, you know, Northern California um, to focus on, again, it's, it's, it's widely applicable um, to look at the impact of federal funding that goes to the state and then state funding and um, to look at the recovery efforts. So we can, we can look at the, that for insurance companies, for example, to show, you know, they have um, policy holders that are in a particular area that's devastated. We can look at the area before the disaster happened, which is what we did for uh, Census Innovation Lab for the impact, and then right after it happens, and then a point in the future to see, for example, has, has the recovery taken place, or for insurance companies, what is the change in percentage of, of damage from being, you know, um, pre-disaster to, you know, immediately post-disaster, which gives them an understanding of what's my exposure. Mm 
Uh, we can also, as I mentioned, pull in, you know, other data sources and we, we work, you know, with open source and proprietary, the gamut of data sources to be able to drill down on, for example, what is it going to cost to rebuild based on today's prices for materials, which, you know, since the pandemic ha have doubled and, and even tripled in certain places. So that's very evolving information that we can, or data that we can pull in and give a picture of. Wow. And I would imagine, uh, as Deb was mentioning here, that it's it's good for assessing disaster damages for government and insurance. So on the government side as well, I would assume there's quite a bit of an evaluation in terms of the damage from you know cities, the residential areas, but also the natural resources and wildlife and absolutely, absolutely. And we looked at the um, the like the uh, built environment, and that and included also the natural environment because there's there's you know hundreds and hundreds of acres of natural environment that's affected by, for example, a wildfire or a flood, and we can help the government look at what. You know, understand what what monies they've or funding that they've given to address the impact and help the recovery after the disaster to determine if it was effective, looking at it before, mm -hmm. immediately after, and then sometime in the future when the projects were to be completed. And then that enables the government to say, ask, you know, really important questions if, if it wasn't completed or if it was even, you know, was the strategy effective that we decided to use for this recovery? So what did we plant enough trees? Did we plant them in the right place? Did we, you know, it, it runs the gamut, the different types of recovery strategies that they can employ. So what's the strategy, you know, was that effective enough? Should there have been others that we could, should have added? Did we, did we fund it well enough to be able to achieve the outcome that we were looking for? And we can even look at the scopes of work for the contractors that the government hired to, to um, complete, to do the recovery efforts and look at say, did they actually complete it based on, did they actually fulfill their scope of work and in the time frame that they were supposed to do it? And when you're looking at thousands of acres and thousands of, of where there's multiple teams going out, people on the ground, um, lots of lots of different impacts from a disaster, you know, that's that's quite valuable for them to be able to pull together relatively quickly. You know, using our satellite imagery analysis, using you know third-party data, and again, like we, we're data and and hardware agnostic, so we were, yeah. we remain very flexible. Yeah, I mean, some of these things that you're describing really, you can see they have a global impact, which uh, it's in the name of your company too. Mm -hmm. Makes sense, but uh, it, I'm interesting with with some of these um, examples too. Would there be a case in the future where you can also track while that incident is happening? And and you know see what sort of model you can come up with that estimates maybe the further damage or mm -hmm. even the funds that need to be poured into it for um, just fixing it. That's that's a great question, George. And we looked into that, and our we didn't focus on that for uh, the the project that we did with the innovation lab, which we uh, the OMB, the Office of Management and Budget, part of the government, that was our stakeholder there. Um, and also state emergency preparedness agencies. But we also can use, so we can use various images. So we can use satellite images. We can apply our high resolution proprietary um, techniques and analytics to any kind of image. So we can we could do drone images. So for example, if, the, if there's in a wildfire, there might be a lot of smoke or there will be a lot of smoke. Um, you know, that might cloud a satellite's ability to, depict the image that it's pointing to, whereas we could we could deploy, we could use drone imagery, which can fly obviously closer to ground. It, yes, there's smoke issues. We could have ways to filter that or look at that so that we can oh. guesstimate, you know, or forecast what the, what the government and what, you know, the private sector is looking at in terms of damage. And, and one thing I want to mention too, that we did that was really interesting to pull into our conversation here, um, it, 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 uh, it aligns with the, you know, the image analysis that we're doing is we developed a solution for, you know, US SOCOM, which is, you know, the um, operators, the warfighters that go in on the ground, you know, the, the special ops to, you know, in various types of, of uh, areas, but a lot of contested areas, they call it in areas that are in denied environments without any, um, 
uh, uh, internet connection. Mm -hmm. And they use these devices they call TAC devices. And um, they're also used by firefighters, by, you know, uh, security, uh, different emergency, um, you know, groups on the ground. So we mm -hmm. could actually be sending them information from our analytics of drone images, for example, or satellites to to and analyzing again, pulling in multiple data sources to create a picture for them to help them manage fighting a disaster, to help them, you know, um, understand, you know, where they need to be deployed, where what types of resources they need to deploy, and that's a really exciting and very impactful, as you can imagine, application. Well, absolutely, and I would assume this has to be just really quick and 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 fast in terms of the processing and uh, delivering that information then we can take a month and people looking in and um, you know cleansing that data and and testing them all i mean everything needs to be ready and delivered absolutely and we did that for socom right into the hands of the warfighters on the ground whereas before they were never they couldn't access that information it was often like stale old as you just mentioned and that actually caused you know, put them in danger. It's actually cost lives. And so um, we can do that again, similarly. And there's, it brings in the whole really exciting area of edge computing, which we did with as part of our solution for SOCOM. But, um, you know, it, and then again, as I mentioned before, we can apply it to various images. So we could apply it to look at, you know, the activity of pathogens, for example. So... Wow. So, so let's talk about that a little bit. But, but first, actually, I want to take this one question from Rajendra, and maybe I don't know if you can answer all of it. But what he's saying is, nice, Don. Would you notice that the economy goes up after a natural disaster? You know, are there any positives that can be drawn from it? Also, on your census projects, your study has inputs for government insurance companies. Do you also make it available for common people? Like how difficult it is to get insurance process, etc. Um, so for census, that's a that's a really good question. Um, for census, we 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 help census report on the data that, and they again, it's it's construction indicator data. Each month, we don't um, we we just focus, but that on those data points, but that data is available, you know, from Census Bureau. So um, for going forward with in terms of um, insurance, we could do that. We, we could help an insurance company um, understand the kind of claims that they're getting. So do sort of a um, making them smarter with respect to the types of claims they're going to get that they, mm -hmm. they can then improve their processing or set their processing up to adjudicate those claims more efficiently and effectively. I mean, these are, these are really important practical applications that are, you know, great, are great to understand and talk about because they do. They, they What I love about advanced analytics and emerging technologies is how practical the application can and should be. I mean, they, they should be improving things like we all should work on that, improving with our, with our clients and our constituents to be able to improve how it impacts the individual person, you know, who goes and files a claim with an insurance company, for example. Yeah, absolutely. It's a, a, and I can't believe. I mean, this technology and this type of service exists already, and you guys are delivering it. I mean, it's, it's things that you see in movies and re read in uh, science fiction, fiction books, but you guys are doing it. It's fantastic. So, Don, sure. you were mentioning the pathogen. So, we're we're zooming yeah. in from the satellite level all the way to that microscopic level. And I know Ravid had a question here on the COVID and how that. Mm -hmm. um, maybe had impacted the work that you do. Uh, so let's, yeah, let's talk about the, the pathogens work. Okay. That, that's great. That's, um, so that's, that's a, that's a project we have in development right now. Um, we actually have a patent um, pending on that work that uh, one of our data scientists is doing who has, um, he has a background in electron microscopy. Um, he's an expert at it. Um, Dom, Dr. Andrea Farah. And uh, he's worked at NIH and other very esteemed uh, places and, and laboratories. And so he's w working on with our with us to develop a um, look at look at images from um, of like any kind of pathogen. So pathogens are, you know, um, 
uh, bacterial, viral, uh, you know, they, they run the gamut. And so for this, in this particular case, our focus is on looking at, you know, a COVID or a, a virus pathogen with the understanding that we'd like to have an impact, you know, the most pressing emergency of our day, which is, you know, the COVID pandemic. Um, and to look at the way in which um, he, the electron mic 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 microscope can really look at very small images. I mean, and it's it's amazing to look at them actually, and then to apply advanced analytics using CNN to understand how they're interacting with with cells. And so um, by by being able to actually observe that and look at that, you can develop, you can have like pharmaceutical companies can do more effective drug development that can actually better treat patients that have gotten have gotten COVID and, and need to recover. Um, and then, you know, inform all kinds of, of types of drug development, um, potentially even, you know, vaccine development. But to date, there has been no, there's no um, instance of anyone being able to look at the interaction, the literal interaction of the virus with cells or any kind of pathogen. Um, it's been done via the vis -vis AI modeling, which is amazing, um, you know, and, and tremendous. We, we want to look at it literally. And, and I, I think it would say, like, I think it's called, and, and Andre, if, I, if he's listening, please forgive me if I mispronounce it, but it's in C2. So looking at it as it's, as it's happening. Wow. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned a C-A-N, if I heard that right, what would that be? In, in C2, it's I-N-S-I-T-U. And my understanding is that's looking at it as it's happening, like right there, not, not, you know, doing it by proxy, you know, using AI models, but applying AI to study the in like in C2 interaction of a pathogen and a cell, which is amazing. And it would also draw their own conclusion um, out of that interaction. Yes. Yeah, so you, so you would uh, like a molecular biologist and it would run, you know, all different types of experts can look at that and then draw conclusions. So on on how the the activity of the pathogen and the interaction with the cell. So how it's how it is interacting with the cell, how it penetrates the cell, and then from that understanding or those those uh, insights, be able to then develop you know drug treatments that are more effective that can interrupt and dis disrupt that mm -hmm. from happening. Mm -hmm. For example, and sorry, I want to jump to a couple of questions. Rajendra is also wondering if you have your own satellites or you're using a third party source. That's a great question, and I meant to mention that. So thank you for bringing that up. I appreciate it. So we are partnering with Airbus to um, use Airbus satellite images, and so we have there are access to their archive archived images. And then we're also working with them to add to our repertoire, our, our uh, data repository, the ability to point and shoot the satellites at different, you know, times and different uh, locations. And so, um, so that's that's the partner that we're working with on that project. And I want to come back to some of these projects too, but I also want to take Kevin's question here. And it's asking, how has your career evolved to pinpoint and deliver impact in the area where your effort is needed most? Aspiring MPH. Oh, wow. That's a, uh, um, that's a, that's a really good question that, um, you know, I, I would say that, and I, I'm not really sure that this is exactly the right answer, but what comes to mind that, you know, you're looking for, Kevin, but is that I've always been really curious and, and I, I read a lot and I, I, I'm like, I, I think I consider myself a constant learner, constant, you know, a, 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 an ongoing student. And that, that draws me to different opportunities and different with different companies or, or to understand different types of, you know, technologies, um, you know, what, what are the problems out there that we're looking to solve? What is it that gets me so excited and I'm passionate about? Um, you know, one of the things that I worked on with, when I was working um, in healthcare was to be able to move from a, 
um, a fee-based system or fee-for-service system to a value-based system in the United States, which, um, you know, for in, in the past, you know, every time a provider, you know, delivered a service, they billed for it. And that was just fee for service. And so they, it was unfortunately the consequence was that they, the more services they delivered, the more they got paid. So mm-hmm. then there was a lot of overuse. There was a lot of duplication. And, um, and that led to the issues that you see today in the U.S. healthcare system. Um, and so for profit system. And, um, then there's been a wave and a trend with the, you know, beginning with the U.S. government to move to a value base so that providers, at least with public payment programs like Medicare and Medicaid and even, um, you know, private health systems are adopting this because it's proved to be so effective in terms of the patient outcomes and then cost um, effectiveness is to reward providers for delivering value. So, you know, having them adhere to to certain quality measures, um, you know, being able to treat a patient, be more patient centered, treat the patient more holistically and, um, you know, getting in, you know, reading about that, understanding that trend and then being able to like put myself in it, like jump in it was a really um, great, you know, um, point in my career in terms of in terms of how it evolved. And the really exciting part of that is it involves a lot of data analytics. Um, and so we can bring AI and emerging technologies to bear on helping to move our system to be more value-based um, and then be able to really fine tune and understand the impact of that and how, how to do that. So that was where I really got involved with more data analytics. And that has led me to Reveal. And we have a very strong healthcare practice at Reveal and Bench at Reveal where we're doing, for example, um, using AI and ML to do um, detect fraud, waste, and abuse in the Affordable Care Act um, marketplace, which is the ACA, if you guys are familiar with it, where um, it's a, it was a, like a, uh, created by, um, under President Obama, that administration, mm-hmm be able to deliver or offer people, you know, um, options for healthcare insurance. And, um, and so we are looking at detecting fraud, waste and abuse patterns among participants in those exchanges. So whether it be like an an, an enrollee, whether it be a broker or provider, and we're able to apply, you know, advanced analytics to detect which would have been otherwise undetectable uh, potential patterns of fraud, waste, and abuse so that the government can get ahead of that because the government and other um, organizations and industries lose billions to fraud, waste, and abuse. Oh, so that's another, yeah. And Don, in that example, is that just looking at structured data or also, you know, scans of, of receipts and things like that? So unstructured information. So, right. So we are, so we, we're moving towards, towards that um, in turn, we can do, um, uh, we can look at structured and unstructured data. And so I believe that, and, and I might not, I, I don't want to misspeak, but I believe that we are either doing that or we're going to looking to be able to incorporate that. And we've, we've looked at that for other potential solutions for governments, um, entities, agencies, and organizations. So, you know, we, we, and, and as you know, the satellite image data is unstructured data. It's right. big data. And right. so we are able to combine unstructured data with structured data to be able to deliver, you know, really, um, I, I use the word impactful a lot because I, I just, it's, it's, a, it's really true, impactful insights. Absolutely. And, and that's the exciting part of it that you would otherwise not be able to um, discover if you didn't, weren't able to leverage these amazing technologies. So Don, I mean, just listening to you, you know, I feel like I want to work for your company, first of all, or if I was a, a company looking for the service, I would want to hire your company to help me out because you're, what you're talking about here, it's just amazing, mm-hmm. impactful work, like, like you're, you're saying. Before we move on to your, our next question. question. One second. I just want to draw attention. Please do follow Dawn here on LinkedIn and and do engage with her as as she did offer earlier on that you can um, follow up with some questions in private as well. But I also do want to bring attention to the Reveal website. Definitely please go on it. There's some interesting articles as well that you can find a little bit more. But uh, do check it out. And it's revealgc.com. And I'll put it in the comments uh, in, in a little while. Thank you. Thank you for doing that. And yeah, please feel free to reach out. 
So all the examples that we talked about were more most from the public sector. Uh, what other um, companies or enterprises do you have as clients or who can reach out to you? So we are actually moving more and in, expanding into the commercial sector. Um, we're finding at, that a lot of our solutions are really all of them have a lot of applicability and are garnering interest in the commercial sector as well. So working closely through our strategic partners, our technology partners to be able to deliver um, AI and ML to their to their clients. And it really will run a gamut of industries. One, I guess the more imminent ones would be insurance, would be finance. Um, you know, we can also work with uh, manufacturers and supply chain. Um, there, It's really the, the, the world is our oyster in terms of that because of the applicability of all of this and the need. There is so much need and a lot of it is interestingly enough, similar that you'll see across different industries. It might manifest somewhat differently, but really, there's a lot of common need. We're really at the forefront of a revolution in a lot of ways, even though we see it, you know, we read about it happening, but in terms of applying it and really making advanced analytics and AI and ML work, we're really at the very beginning of that. And that's one, that's our mission. Um, and one thing I just want to add on to that, that I just recalled from our census work is the Census Bureau, um, there's a there's a committee that's comprised of, of experts in um you know for the work we're doing up for census and construction but also other 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 industries and and uh researchers and scientists and real you know thought leaders and um after we had presented because we started the work with census as a proof of concept and the team um and, and uh, avinash farmer our executive vice president he does an amazing job um and our team um uh, you know, there, and I, I'd love to talk more about about this, but you know, um, Hector Farinata, Sharana Maripaldi, um, we have there's so many amazing folks that I on our team. Um, they um, presented the our proof of concept to this the committee, and one of the committee members, a very esteemed expert in the field, said, "This is the first time I've actually seen AI and ML work." Hmm you know, really make a difference. And so we have so much opportunity to do that in the public sector, in the commercial sector, across industries. And that's what get, that's what fires us up. Um, I mean, and there's plenty, like there's so much opportunity for, you know, like around the table. Um, you know, we have also amazing business analysts that work on our team that try, you know, need to understand how to really make it how to really make sense of the problem, uh, how to address it for the client and their particular needs. Um, you know, so I, so it's really, as I, it's really limitless. Absolutely. Like Andrea here was mentioning the impact of AI system monitoring of length scales from the nano to the macro has just started to impact the quality of our lives. Yes. Yes. Like Doc, that's Dr. Farah, who uh, is, is one of our, uh, just he's he's brilliant and um thanks andrea i like ravid's questions <laughs> so that brings me to an important question it's reveal hiring <laughs> um, please so, feel, yes we are always looking for um you know dedicated talented um you know curious uh and you know passionate individuals so please reach out to to me i will you know, or, or on our website, there's actually, um, you know, a, a, a page where you can contact our HR and, um, and by all means, please do so. <laughs> That's great. Now, um, Don, I'm also wondering, in all these cases, what's the consideration when it comes to um, ethics? Is there sort of a code of ethics that Reveal follows or is sort of international guidelines, national guidelines? Mm -hmm. So we're very cognizant of um, ethics in terms of data governance and AI governance, and we take that very seriously. So uh, we actually are, we're in the process of updating and um, so we have, you know, best practice, AI governance and data governance policies and processes and um, checks and balances in place, because it is incredibly important as 
we know that there can be a lot of bias, for example, in algorithms. And uh, we, we really are working hard to make sure that that, and, and also with data, like the data itself. So making sure that we, we really look at that to mitigate those biases and uh, ensure the integrity of our data. Um, Cause as we, we talk about the three V's, there's, you know, veracity, velocity, and volume. Mm -hmm. And we, and, and it's, it's really about the data and what we do with it. Um, the quality of the data without, without quality data, you don't have anything. It could be the fanciest, most brilliant, you know, algorithm or model, you know, uh, technology, technique, methodology. But if you don't have the right data, it's nothing. And that, that we take that very seriously. So being that you, you do use third party data, uh, you know, do your data scientists follow the pattern that 60 to 80 percent of their time has to be spent on cleansing it? I don't, I don't know the exact percentage, but I do know that a lot of um, expertise and time, uh, focus and thoughtfulness has gone into ensuring that we are able to bring in and cleanse and kind of, uh, you know, um, we have it again, it's like diversified data. So it all has to speak the same language. It has to have um, you know, everything has to be referred to similarly for our, for our models to be able to analyze. And so when, and I know there's, you know, there's terminology that I'm not thinking of right at the moment, but it, you know, one data source might call something X, another one might call the same thing Y, and mm -hmm. that goes into being able to compile and, um, standardize that data and, and the, and the way in which that we, refer to it and structure it is is really important. What's one of the big tasks that our teams do and do very well. I can only imagine. Now, Don, a couple of weeks ago when we talked about um, having you on the show, I know we, we briefly touched upon convolutional net, uh, neural networks. So what are, what are their usage for some of these models? Do you use them for all the way from micro to macro or is it just on select few? or anything that requires advanced analytics on imaging? So I I would really defer to Dr. Farah to, to really respond to that question. So I would love to be able to confer with him or if he wants to jump in with a comment right now, I would welcome it. Um, I don't want to, you know, inadvertently because it's highly technical and um, it's Absolutely. also proprietary, proprietary technique that we developed. So I just want to be careful. I'm not trying to avoid the question, but um, if, Dr. Andre, if you're on, feel free to jump in. If not, I would be happy to do a follow-up for you guys and for the audience. Thank you. And, and sorry, Don, I, I didn't mean to put you on the spot there. With, <laughs> oh, no, with no the... worries. No worries. I, I'm very honest. I'll, I'm very, I'll let you know if I, um, you know, because what we do, we take really seriously and I don't ever want to, you know, mischaracterize or, or anything that our team's worked really hard on. And there's a couple of questions, uh, comments here really on the, the quality of the data and uh, this might be Kevin, I'm not I sure, think it's Kevin, yeah. but yes, I agree. Analyze, refine, and use relevant data. It's very important. And um, Sharania was saying that Reveal does spend time cleanse, cleaning the data. We majorly use Alteryx to help with data cleansing and prepping. Thanks, Sharania. Thanks, Kevin. So what does your typical day look like, Don? It's very. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like no one day looks the same and I'm, and I like it that way. Um, I feel like we, we work, we're working continuously on, um, you know, bringing things from, you know, start to finish for, uh, and in terms of addressing different solutions, I'm continuously, and, and the, our teams are great at that. And I feel like their days, even though they might be working on the same project, there's always new things happening and innovations. And then, you know, over to um, on the business side of things in terms of their strategy and growth, we're always working closely together to be able to identify new opportunities, new ways in which we can apply our technologies and partners through which to do that. Um, you know, our like in terms of even our marketing messaging is trying to put information out there that's educational, helpful, and can connect people, whether it be we connect parties or we connect with people. It's really important to have that collaborative approach and constantly looking for ways in which to collaborate, connect, and um, apply these, mm -hmm. these, uh, these, um, these solutions or in our, our, you know, our technologies. Right. 
And how do you celebrate these amazing successes? <laughs> I wish we could celebrate them together. Um, that's mm -hmm. how we would we would have done it pre-pandemic. Um, you know, we, we we it's challenging in a in you know in the in in a remote world that we're working in. It, working in, we we try to we take pains to be able to um, bring groups together, whether they're subgroups in our in our company of technologists and um, that are talk about all the different things that they're doing and together. And um, then we have we have of course the the venerable happy hour um, that we bring <laughs> everybody together. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, you know, we, we try to make that, we try to make that fun. And I think, you know, it's a great way to connect, but, um, and we have folks that will always work remote, you know, so we'll always make efforts to try to connect everyone. Um, so we just, you know, it, it'll be, um, we're, we're developing an intranet approach now too for our company so that we people have one place to go to be able to see what's going on. You know, it's really important for, people that are focused on one project and it's, it's, you know, it's, if they eat, you know, they eat, sleep and breathe it um, to understand that there's another team doing the same thing and, and, and uh, with exciting technology and use cases somewhere else. Absolutely. We have a question here from Kevin as well. Is there any use of blockchain technology in uh, any of your models, any of your work, or there's maybe not an application for it yet? There, there isn't, to my knowledge yet. Uh, we are very focused on being able to leverage that technology and ways in which to do that. And so that's definitely um, been part of our, you know, te technology development and, uh, you, you know, innovate, innovation discussions for sure. Absolutely. Um, you know, I might try to dabble in some, uh, some Bitcoin or something like that, but, you know. <laughs> 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 a little scary. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We we haven't taken the leap uh, yeah. either. <laughs> so, Don, what are some of the the biggest challenges with with analyzing images? Really, and I know it's a loaded question, and I know there are a lot of challenges off the bat. But is there anything that really stands out, or something that you think you've you've nailed down, and now you know how to tackle the next time you're encountering it? Yeah, I think you know. Um speaking on behalf of the technical team and of course they're going to have more nuanced uh observations since they're working with it and from the beginning and on a day-to-day -day basis one of the things that i observed or have, have have learned is that the um you know so there's the there's the um technology of being being able to do high resolution analysis mm -hmm. of the images before that you know and but that's that's one thing that's really important. And again, it's a, we have a proprietary technique that we use to do that. I would say that's generally a challenge out there. Um, our the brilliant minds in our on our team have have worked to develop ways to 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 do that. Uh, there's also you know using images properly to train the models and mm -hmm. properly, and that's another area that's very challenging. That again, I. They've, our teams just worked so hard on it and applied so much ingenuity, like creativity, um, to over and over again continuously develop this and help it evolve is another really important. It's a big challenge, but and it's one that our team has really worked hard to overcome. And uh, you know, in terms of developing, you know, I, proprietary techniques, methodologies. Thank you. And what about the, the business requirement side? Um, do you do you tend to help your customers figure out what the question should be, or is it pretty straightforward? They come with you with this is what we want to know, or do you help them articulate um, once you take a look at the data and maybe their requirements, and you help them discern what should they actually be looking for? That's a really important question, George, and I appreciate you bringing that up, and appreciate your questions too, Diana. I. That this, this, I'm so happy we're having this conversation because this is an area that we find is challenging, um, not just you know it's in the public sector and in the private sector. And so we take an approach where we do like a discovery. So we will talk to the client. We will we will do like an assessment of the client's uh, situation with a cross-functional team, including you know business analysts, technologists, business people. Um, and uh, 
and and then kind of get an understanding of what the what the challenges are. So what are what are the I don't like to you know what are the problems. Um, and really talking with their subject matter experts, not just the, the client doing the the buying of, of it, you know, did doing the vendor or the we we are never call ourselves vendors, we always call ourselves because it's true, partners with our mm-hmm. clients. But talking to their subject matter experts, their cross-functional subject matter experts that are all, you know, impacted by this and, and are involved in in dealing with the, the challenge to really learn about it and do a deep dive. And then once we're able to do that, then we make, can make recommendations to, to the client because sometimes they don't have enough knowledge and often to be able to understand what's actually possible. And that's our job. Um, that's what we do. And so we help them understand you know, and sometimes what they think is their problem, there really is not their main problem. There's other challenges that they need to be aware of. And so we take that part of our, of our, of our partnership with our clients is incredibly important. And we really, um, we we like to call, we fall in love with their problem, really get to know it and, and be able to, even in a way that might, that might be even more so than they themselves have an awareness, Mm -hmm. because it's absolutely mission critical to be able to, create an end-to-end solution that's going to be, um, you know, comprehensively and, you know, in, uh, address their issue. Well, Falling in love with the client problem. That's amazing. Yeah. I, I think it. I'm going to steal that. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. I'm going <laughs> to use it. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question regarding the next step. So you talked about a uh, pattern. You talked about, um, you know, ML and AI and so on. So what are, what are, the next steps, what is, what is coming up for you for, for reveal? For reveal. The next steps for reveal is we are, we're, we're expanding in, in our public sector and um, we have a really fantastic leadership team. Um, you know, Naveen Kapoor is our president. Uh, I mentioned Avinash Pharma. We have an, another really amazing leader, Amit Kare, and then our teams are together working to um, because we're we're getting uh, awareness is being generated across the public sector of the success that we're having at Census and other with other government clients, and it's exciting because the government in he, public sector is becoming aware of the value and importance of emerging technologies such as AI, ML, CNN, they don't necessarily know how to, what they need. It's just what I mentioned. Um, So they're coming to us and we're getting, they're putting out also like RFIs, requests for information. They're putting out a lot of feelers to understand how do we even procure these. And so we're able to get in on the ground floor since we're already doing that in the public sector. And so there's a lot more, a lot more to come of that. A lot more of our work at Census, it's, uh, we're going to be working on helping them resolve to address other you know, challenges and um, working with partners, strategic partners to do that, technology partners to do that, um, teaming partners to do that. So there's a lot of wonderful things going on there. And in government, it's exciting to be part of that. And as I mentioned, we're expanding into commercial. Um, we're working with our technology partners, for example, Alteryx, to be able to take their technology, their their, their um, platform, which is a really amazing platform. And there's others out there. We work with Databricks, as I mentioned. We maybe I didn't mention them yet, but we're we're you know we're hardware and software agnostic. We do recognize there are val- there's incredibly valuable technologies out there that really work well with our you know our our emerging technologies. Alteryx is one of those, and so they're coming to us to say, can you help our commercial clients really optimize the value of our platform? Because our platform does amazing things, but if we don't deliver, if we don't properly enable the customer, configure the platform to address the customer's needs, and then offer them your solutions or services to be able to really um, optimize the value that they get from the platform to really address the challenges that they're facing, you know, that helps us be successful. Um, And that helps mostly our clients be successful because if the client isn't successful, no matter what sector they're in, you know, everyone's lost at the end of the day. You've all lost. We've all lost. Absolutely. Yeah. 
Well, Don, we're coming to an end here of our show. Um, I do want to encourage again anybody that's listening that what what's watching this to definitely check out reveal gc.com a lot of useful information there as well so definitely please check it out and do follow dawn as well on linkedin and engage with her um online offline and um yeah, yeah like to thank everybody for joining us today yes and i wanted to ask uh dawn is there anything else you would like to share with us any w- c- closing words or anything that we have not covered Um, I would just want to thank everyone for joining us and folks that are going to be listening to this. And I would say, you know, go out there and be brave, be bold, look at, look at issues that are, that, that are exist out there, especially, you know, with respect to how data analytics and emerging technologies can come to bear on how to, how to solve them. And they don't have to be how to send, you know, someone into space. They can be, they're everyday problems. And we have a lot of them that can benefit from um, advanced analytics. So, Absolutely. And I do hope that a government of Canada is listening in <laughs> as well, because I think we definitely would need a, a solution and a partner such as yourself, as well as other governments in the world. I think a lot of countries would benefit from uh, these types of, uh, of uh, yeah, solutions, impactful solutions. We would love the opportunity. It's our mission, as I said. Exactly. Beautiful. Well, thank you, everybody. Thank you, Dawn, again for coming on the show. It was such a pleasure to listen to your stories and learn from from your learnings as well. And thank, thank you, you very so much, much, everyone who uh, joined in, and for your wonderful and very insightful mm-hmm. questions, as always. Thank you, everybody. Really appreciate that. Have thank a great you. week. Bye. Bye. Bye.